Hello and welcome to the Octane High Tech Awards in Orange County, California. I'm Jane King. Matrigenics designs, develops, and manufactures highly tunable nanofibrous materials adaptable to the customized needs of a wide range of applications. And with me is Dr. Sharif Solomon, the CEO of Matrigenics, to explain the company. And I know uh, nanofibers is your core technology. Uh, what is nanofiber? Why is that important? Well, nanofibers are nanomaterials of a fiber shape. The width of a nanofiber can be about a thousand times smaller than the width of a single human hair. So when you make a web out of these tiny fibers, you end up having a structure that is highly porous with high surface area and a very tunable nanoscale architecture. Mm -hmm. And because of these unique properties, nanofibers has gained substantial interest in a wide range of different applications. Now, while there's a wealth of scientific publication, much reason to believe that nanofibers are actually a key to many applications, the industrial adoption for this technology has been extremely slow and limited. That has or been my passion and my main reason and motivation behind founding Metrogenics. So I really wanted to change that. And basically we saw a technology with a huge potential that has been trapped in academic labs. Mm. And we set a goal to take nanofibers to the global market. Yeah, okay. And it seems like there's a lot of different applications. There's energy and uh, medicine. I mean, can you elaborate on that? Where all could this be used? Yes, the potential of nanofiber is literally unlimited. So far, we have leveraged this technology to develop multiple products for a wide range of different applications that includes, but not limited to, just to mention a few, water and air filtration, smart textile that's biologically and chemically protective, um, wearables, sensors, some application energy, you name it. Mm -hmm. And that's all beside the biomedical applications that has been one of our main focus areas that we have spent extensive time doing R&D. And as, as a result of our R&D activities, we have developed this exciting new technology for soft tissue repair applications. Oh, interesting. So talk about that a little bit more. What would the soft tissue repair um, and the nanotechnology, like what kind of problems would that solve? Well, while soft tissue repair market has evolved over the past um, few decades, the number of technologies that are suitable for this 20 billion industry has remained essentially stagnant. To begin, the industry really has continued to depend on a scarce biological resources such as allografts derived from human cadavers or xenografts derived from animals. These materials carry danger of disease transmission, immune rejection, they require special storage conditions, and their very weak mechanical properties limits their wide application in a clinical setting. The second problem is the current available technologies to process these materials has been confined to fundamental approaches, such as making them into hydrogel, sponges, or films. And these formations lack the very basic microscale architecture that is necessary to promote tissue regeneration. We believe that a product devoid of animal and human components, and at the same time designed to replicate native tissue, will address a major healthcare problem and create a paradigm shift in this specific market. Oh, interesting. And for that reason, we have launched or we have been developing this new platform technology called Matronova to repair damaged tissue. So Matronova is one of a kind design that resembles biological tissue with extremely highly porous nanofibers that's acting as a scaffold to facilitate tissue regeneration. Matronova is constructed of a unique and innovative synthetic material Significantly, unlike any other synthetic material that has been brought to the market so far, our material does not produce any acidic byproduct that causes tissue inflammation, and eventually it breaks into amino acid just like a natural material. So again, because it's not a biological material or substance, there is no risk of disease transmission, immune rejection, and it's mechanically robust, making it easier for surgeons to handle and manipulate and suture during surgery. So this this is a truly platform technology that could be applied for every single application, soft tissue repair, and have the potential to disrupt this 20 billion market 
and create a paradigm shift by shifting the market from allografts and xenografts, biological materials, to engineered synthetic scaffolds. Okay. How far is that technology from commercialization? Our initial target market for this platform technology is targeting two products. One, a dental barrier membrane for guided bone regeneration, and two, a wound healing matrix for partial and full thickness wounds. The development of these products has been complete, and that include completing all bench te testing and data, um, a pilot animal study that has established the safety of these products. We've also achieved commercial scale level production. And recently, we had our pre-submission meeting with the FDA, and we are very clear on the regulatory requirements to submit 510K applications on these two products. We're actually anticipating to launch these two products within the next two years. What about um, in terms of uh, scaling the technology, how easy is it to do that? Well, there's a general perception, and it's actually a misconception, that this is not a scalable technology. And that's kind of because the technology that creates quality nanofibers at large speed does not exist today. So we created it. So we leveraged our proprietary spinning technology and built industrial scale electro spinning machines that have been demonstrated and proven to produce nanofibers at large scale. So in fact, we have today enough manufacturing capacity to produce 100% or to cover 100% of the US market needs for our initial chip products. Yeah. Interesting. How yeah. is the company currently funded? The company is currently funded um, really up to date. It's 100% bootstrapped. So it has been self-sustained through offering custom contract uh, development and manufacturing. And so far, we generated 3.6 million revenue, which was entirely reinvested into R&D. Also, we have been actively applying for non-dilutive funding from different government agencies. And just recently, last month, actually, we had our first phase one SBIR grant from the National Institute of Health. Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Solomon, for coming in, telling the story of metrogenics and what you're doing with nanotechnology. And um, it'll be fascinating to watch this develop. Thank you, Jane. Pleasure being uh -huh. here.